Girl, you've got questions. Questions about your body and how to feel good in it, about your hormones and how to keep them in check. Questions about your sex life and your whole health. Can you imagine having a best girlfriend who was also a triple board certified OBGYN? A girlfriend doctor you could call and ask or tell her anything. Someone who could show you how to live any stage of life before, during, or after menopause in a big, bold, and beautiful way. Well, friends, I'm your girlfriend doctor. I believe you are meant to flourish and shine, to embrace life and awaken to all its possibilities. Let's get there together. Welcome to our show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Girlfriend Doctor Show. I'm Dr. Anna Kabeca, The Girlfriend Doctor, and I'm thrilled to be here with you today. You know, in working as I do with women almost exclusively for the past, you know, over 25 years now, one of the issues that come up, comes up a lot is body image. And it usually has something to do with a love-hate relationship with the scale and this sense of like, you know, when, when do I actually ever love my body? And if you've read in my books, The Hormone Fix or Keto Green 16, I talk about a happy weight and how important that is. Well, I was in a coaching call with one of our girlfriends in the Girlfriend Doctor Club, and she came on and she said, Dr. Ann, I've been doing Keto Green, and I, I do so well, and I feel so great, and then I fall off the wagon, and I sabotage myself again. And so... And she said, I just feel like I, I keep defeating myself. I keep getting in my own way. And so I asked her, I said, why do you think that is? And she says, she pauses. And then she says, with a choking voice, that there's nothing she likes about herself. And she feels she doesn't deserve to feel well. And we have been in this group with this beautiful woman for a while and many of the girls on the call also got choked up and it was a realization for her and a wake-up moment for all of us to look into each of us and turn around and transform into our own best coach so we start with well what do you like about yourself you know, and if you get to the issues of, of, of why you feel like you don't deserve that are focusing on the whys you don't versus on why do you and how you can turn this around so that we can start focusing on the good that's within each and every one of us. So often I take women on this journey and say, okay, what would you say to your six-year-old self? How would you talk to your six-year-old self? And what would you tell her? And and start from that, start from being your own best coach. And you would say, and this is what she said, she, go, she said to her six-year-old self, she said, it's not your fault. She said, it's not your fault. You're completely innocent. You're just beautiful. And start from there, start from there. And that was a beautiful transformational moment for, for this client, for this girlfriend in our Girlfriend Doctor Club. And there's so much work that so many of us have to do. Me too. I was the fat kid. I was the fattest, shortest kid in fifth grade. I'll never forget that. And I grew several inches after that. But, you know, the fattest, shortest kid, first generation American, totally looked different, felt different than those otherwise. My mom had an accent. We spoke three languages at home. My parents spoke four each. And it was, we were in suburbia, America, Hapro, Pennsylvania. And that's where, that's where I grew up feeling really different. So there were a lot of messages that even I had told or written on my soul that made me feel um, less than, or like I had to prove myself even more. And so probably some of you are shaking your head and saying, yeah, I can relate to that. I know what, I know what that's, that's like. And how does it translate now to us in our 40s, 50s, and beyond, or even, you know, our, our, our youth, our, our children, our daughters, the 10, 20, the teens and 20s, and, and what is our body image about? I had, was had an interesting conversation with a gentleman I went out on a date with, and he, because we were talking about my keto green plan and diet, and he goes, you know, so many people are just so obsessed with what they're putting in their mouth and their food and their exercise, and every pound is a fight and a battle. And he says, you know, you know, why do women do that to themselves? And he's like, you know, I've got my beer gut, a little bit flabby, but I feel pretty darn good about myself. 
well, you know, praise Lord, men have that natural self-confidence. Women, on the other hand, okay, we need a little bit of that, but hey, they got to they gotta rein that in and get rid of that beer gut anyway, right? But with that said, <laughs> I want to share with you just some really important strategies and tools that we're going to use and incorporate into our lives, into our mentality to really expand our horizon and have more joy, self-care, and self-worthiness in our lives. So today on the Girlfriend Doctor Show, I have a really special guest. I've been trying to get this woman on my show for probably, gosh, I think it's two years, because at least a year before COVID, or at least a year and a half. And you may know of her mother, who is a very special, amazing healer, transformative coach. And I know many of the women in my audience have done her transformational programs. And so, um, and that is Mary Morrissey. Mary Morrissey, I have followed her work for years, and she actually gave the wedding ceremony at my dear friend JJ Virgin and her husband Tim's wedding, Tim Oregon and JJ Virgin. So um, she ministered at that ceremony, and I just, I, I'd never heard a better sermon, and it just spoke to my heart and the heart of everyone, everyone there. It was just a really a magical moment to see her in that very intimate setting and then to hear her on stage and humbly give her give her um, testimony and her journey well her daughter is joining us today who is a oh my gosh a trailblazer or trailblazer in her own right and doing such amazing empowerment work for women so i'm really blessed to share today jennifer jimenez with you and she is the founder and owner of vibrant healthy living she is in partnership with her mom, Mary Morsey, and the Brave Thinking Institute, which is the premier training center for transformational coaching. Together, they passionately help people create and live healthy, vibrant lives that they love living. So I'm really excited to share with you Jennifer and her work today, and she's going to introduce um, herself and her journey with us a little bit more here today. Jennifer, thank you. Welcome to the Girlfriend Doctor Show. Oh my goodness. I have been looking forward to this, as you mentioned, for quite some time. So I'm so glad that the stars aligned and uh, we get to be here together talking about this really important, powerful topic. So thank you so much for having me. Well, I, it's my, my honor. Now you have such a story to share. Will you share that with our audience? Yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, it is my story, but with the women that I work with, and I know you work with, it's many of our stories. You know, I know for me, my, my background that basically is a non-loving, uh, not anymore, I've transformed this now, but back in the day, I think it's right around puberty, unless you were, you know, a chubby child and really ridiculed really little what i have found is that a lot of times it's right around that time that our body begins to change and we start to become so much more aware of our physicality and for me my first love is dance so i did become a professional modern dancer so from the age of about 13 to really when i became pregnant with my daughter at 25 I had a completely abusive, neglectful, judgmental, adversarial relationship with my body. I was afraid of food. I didn't really know what my body wanted because it was controlled all the time. You talk about, and I love finding your happy weight. I didn't know what that was because I was told that I wasn't good enough at my body's natural weight. And I was not heavily, heavily overweight or anything like that. Um, and I know many women who felt, and to this day, my daughter's in her early 20s. I just turned 46 and she's my you know, firstborn. She talks about her friends having just this body dysmorphia because of social media and everything that's put in front of us. And um, I will share something she shared with me at my birthday party that made just watershed tears flow down my face because I've been able to not only shift this story for my own self, but I, I was able to hand a new paradigm to my daughter that has completely changed the trajectory of her life and her relationship with her body. This is probably one of the greatest gifts that I feel like I can hear from her now in her early 20s. But in my story, it was really her pregnancy that 
wait, woke me up because it was the first time where I began to connect to something deeper within me that wasn't everything coming, right? All the different diets and lose 10 pounds in 10 days and you got to carve your body and shape your body. I was tapping into my own inner body wisdom. And really through that pregnancy and then coming through that and shifting some things in my life, I really got very, very hungry for everything mind, body, spirit connected. Now I was raised in a family with, of course, my mother, who's a thought leader, who did raise us to know that thoughts become things and how we talk to ourselves is so important. And she did her very best to teach me and show me, you know, to be positive and to say loving things to myself. But the outside world was so much stronger, you know, in some ways, particularly as a young woman. And so I began to really go on this journey, Dr. Anna, to look for doctors like you or to look for books on the mind body spirit connection and ultimately what i was able to find was this incredible solution the the the, the program that i needed to transform my inner limiting belief systems into more empowering not just from an intellectual standpoint but from an embodied standpoint like you're book wasn't out back then yet. You know what I mean? Other books that are out now weren't available on this subject. A lot of what I had to piecemeal together just came from my own passion for transforming this for myself. And I went from a whole slew of disempowering, limiting beliefs and ways of treating myself just to a real complete transformation to now, you know, I know what my body is wanting and needing in terms of nutrition, not just so that my body looks a certain way, because of course we all want to look hot and sexy and beautiful. I've been married 26 years. I want to look good for me and for my hubby. But more than that, I want to feel really amazing when I wake up. I want to have the energy. I want to have optimal functionality in my body. And I want to continue to be able to run after my boys. I also have two sons who play football and they're very fit. And, but even beyond just my own kids, I want to be that grandma, right? That fun, playful, sexy grandma, hopefully 10 or so years from now and still fit and happy. And there's a certain way to feed my body that isn't for the short-term result, but is really for long-term longevity. And I feel like I have found that. Um, and I love your your program. I'm very much in alignment with your anti-inflammatory eating, but also really listening to the body. So having framework, but also freedom within that framework to find that happy place. Um, and so I was able to take everything I learned and you know, I put that now into programs, coaching programs that include health and well-being science. Because as a doctor, you understand and know the importance of the science of it all, but also transformational coaching with the mind, body, spirit connection, that brain, body, you know, spirit connection, so important. And then probably one of the most unique things about what I do is I found conscious dance. Now, conscious dance is the, is the opposite of technical dance. Technical dancers are right and wrong way to do it. And you have to follow your teacher's lead, which by the way, I'm a big fan of all of it as a dancer. There is a space for all that fun technical dancing, but conscious dance completely reprogrammed my relationship with myself and my body and my higher power. And I was able to really discover that our body just loves to dance, period. Like let's we're just designed for movement, right? Yeah. We we're designed for movement. So talk about this conscious dance. What's um, a way someone, one of our listeners can get started in conscious dance? Yeah. Well, I imagine you, Dr. Anna, as a goddess in her kitchen or in her bathroom or living room who just turns on the music and probably just boogies and moves her body joyously and freely. And that's ultimately what conscious dance is, is it's not anybody else telling you how to move, but it's being in a safe space where you can allow the movement or the spirit within you to move your body the way it would love to move. And for me, conscious dance is such a beautiful way to shift if I'm in a funky mood within one song, I can shift out of the funk. 
If I'm low energy because I've been st sitting at how many of us have, are a bit tired of a thousand and one Zoom or you know online classes and sessions where we're having to sit still, I can pop on my favorite song, stand up and do a little bit of an energizer break and feel totally refreshed and more fluid and flexible in my body. It's also a spiritual practice for me. So if I'm feeling disconnected from my soul self, I have a few songs that I'll pop in and I just let the spirit flow. And I remember that this life, for me, this life is all about, you know, we're on this spiritual journey. We're human, we're a spiritual being having a human journey, experience, right? So every circumstance of our life is the curriculum of our spiritual evolution. So when I take a breath, I remember I'm not breathing me. When I feel the beating of my heart, I remember I can't beat my own heart. And there are certain ways of moving and dancing with music that just bring me home. So that all the stuff, all the conditions, all the stress, all the anxiousness that's so easy to get sucked into, that trust me, I get it. It's been a very, very stressful year. And yet I've been able to come home to this place of faith and inner peace with this conscious dance practice that has been so such a blessing not only for me but also the clients that i work with to have access to this practice as a powerful tool uh, i love it i grew up with a mom who would play music and dance around the house while she was doing work or chores or just for the fun of it so um, I grew up with the, the house had music in it all the time, all the time. And that's certainly something, something I love. And um, I need to do that more. Jennifer, it's a really good reminder to do that more. I did take up during this pandemic country dancing. I did way back when, but um, I just started again two-stepping. And so once a week, go to the Cowboys Red River here in Dallas, the Dallas, Texas area, and they give a, a lesson. And that's more of an organized dance and a plan, but then there's the freestyle afterwards. And yet I hear what you're saying about when no one's watching, when you can be completely free and at home in your body. And I think that is truly a beautiful, you know, beautiful reminder and beautiful uh, observation is that as we as we get out of our ego, get out of our head and get back into our body, that in of itself is self care is regenerate, you know, re regenerizing, I just cr created a new word between rejuvenating and energizing, we call that regenerizing here on the girlfriend doctor show, but <laughs> it is a regenerizing experience to really get back in your body. And that is grounding and that's meditative and doing it with movement is a way I believe to raise your vibration. And so I, I, I love this and I love that tip. And we will be right back in a minute to go over some of the things that you talk about as far as, you know, with um, the body freedom, empowerment, the, the beliefs that are abusive to us, as well as the beliefs that we want to now embrace and really, um, absorb into our being that will empower us. So these healthy beliefs and practices to get us into that, from that place of self-criticism to self-love in, in all it's, you know, in, in all that it's meant to be. So we will be right back. Welcome back to the Girlfriend Doctor Show. We had just had an episode with Jennifer Jimenez. We're talking about, you know, what is it like to transform our beliefs and negative self body image to get into that ha healthy, happy weight and to be at home in our body. And she told, told us about conscious movement, conscious dance, and how liberating that is in our beings, as well as grounding and therapeutic. Of course, I love that. You know, as a young girl, I was at six years old, I remember telling my mom I wanted to be three things. I definitely wanted to be a physician. I also wanted to be a nun and I wanted to be a ballerina. Well, I always joke and say I became a doctor by default. <laughs> So not cut out to be a nun or a ballerina, but here we are and really a pleasure to bring back to the show, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. 
I love that you said you wanted to be a ballerina. I think that's really one of the fun aspects of um, Transcendance is the, the modality that I created to help all of us. But particularly, you know, so many, many women I work with did have a dream of being a free dancer. And the dream of what I think we want as a little girl isn't really the reality of what we find in the ballet studio. Now, I'm not dissing ballet. I think ballet, there's such beauty in all forms. I mean, ballet helped train me as a technical dancer to be a professional modern dancer, but it also has its dark side. I think we've all at some point come across an article or something in a show that discusses the dark side really of everything in life. Isn't there a positive side to things and, and a dark, darker side to things. But what I love about Transcendence is it allows all of those little girls that wanted to be ballerinas to feel like now at any age, and I think one of the most important things is any mobility. So there's this, you know, body um, individuality, and then there's body diversity. And I think what the what our country, our culture, our world is asking for right now is body diversity, body love diversity, like all sizes, all shapes, all ages, all ability levels. And I have some people that are healing from surgery that will come to a transcendence class because they can visualize in their mind movement that is free. The music is repatterning cells in their body, just the breath that they'll do from class. And even if they can just move their little finger I say that they're dancing the traditional ways that we've been taught that you have to be, have no ache, no pain, no injury, and be fully, you know, mobile to be a dancer just really isn't true and isn't the case. So one of my favorite things is to really bring this kind of freedom of movement to all people, no matter what the mobility level is. But I know you want to talk about the limiting beliefs versus the empowering beliefs. And I want to close out or open up and also close the open loop that I created with my daughter. So we were at my birthday party and one of the questions was, what has Jennifer taught you? We went around, we had family and friends there and it was like a quick little, you know, something positive that you feel you've learned from me. Recognition. Yes. Yeah, recognition, really birthday nice. stories. It was really fun. And I had no idea what people were going to say. And there was some really lovely things said. And then it got to my daughter. And my, my daughter said, of course, as my mom, she's taught me like a million things, but probably one of the most powerful pieces that she's taught me is, you know, I have so many friends that just hate themselves and hate their bodies. And I was taught from a very young age to love my body just as it is. And I think probably one of the most important things she taught me was how to look in the mirror and how to love what I see. And oh my gosh, I just like, burst oh, out that's beautiful. in like ugly tears because I was not expecting that and it was such a struggle for me like such a struggle for so many years and to be able to not only shift that in my own lifetime because I mean I have women in my life that I have loved who no longer are living who took that to the grave you know, the adversarial hating relationship with their body and I was I said to myself that will not be me I don't want to have that experience. I want to be alive and confident in my body so that I have that much more energy to love my husband and my kids and to bring forth my purpose and my passion and my mission because that energy is such a drain and it's such this vicious cycle and it sucks the life out of us as, as women if we're in that cycle, right? So here are some of the beliefs that I used to have that I no longer have. The first is no pain, no gain. Who's heard that one? Like, that's like Jane Fonda. And I love Jane Fonda. And I totally did the Jane Fonda workout videos. But right, it was like, if it doesn't hurt, you're not burning the muscle, right? So that was an old limiting belief, I feel. Um, the no pain, no gain. And that deprivation and starvation creates results. Mm -hmm. Who believes that one? Um, we're very much in a Western society of all work. And we get celebrated even and rewarded for the overworking and underresting cycle. So that was very much a limiting belief. Well, um, that's so true. Definitely workaholism is one of the isms that's rewarded, right? I've been there, done that. And it is, it's, it's certainly one of those, um, those achievement cycles. It's like a bad, to right? To become a, you know, an ism, a workaholism. So yeah. um, that is one. Mm -hmm. 
Um, resisting and controlling my body's needs and desires. So like the belief would be, oh, I'll go to the bathroom later, like, and literally not honor your natural body's urges or cravings or just those inner desires. Now, I believe that we have, you know, um, urges and desires that can, that are disempowering. Not all of them need to be followed and listened to, but underneath that sugar craving, underneath that craving for that savory food or underneath, like if there's those kinds of food cravings is a deeper soul craving, I believe. And so when I suppress all of those cravings and desires, I'm actually suppressing underneath all of that, what's really seeking to happen, right? What, what's, what my body's really trying to tell me, I believe. So resisting, controlling at all costs, definitely molding and whipping my body into a certain size or shape. Like I have got to be a size four, six, right? Or at the zero body fat and like well, I mean, chiseled. It is, and- yeah, it is that concept. Okay, well, when I'm a size six, I'll feel better. Or when I'm a size whatever, I'll be sexier. When I lose 10 pounds, I'll feel, you know, this, that, and the other. And it's really, it's, that's really not going to change. That's not what it's about. Well, I'll tell you this, having a body that you, having the body that you wish for, hope for starts with loving the body that you have now. Oh, and I, I love you, that. I've, I've been there. I starved myself to a size four, you know, about 10% body fat as a professional dancer. And the way I was in relationship with my body, I was totally miserable. And I've had other times in my life where I've just had a baby I'm like 180 pounds, you know, the doctors would say you need to release weight, but I'm so in love with life and just so in love with my body and what my body's been able to produce and create. And I know that my, what, as I love my body, my body will find homeostasis. You know, when I feed my body true nourishment, my body will come home to a healthy place. So it's not the size, it's really how we're approaching life and our relationship with ourselves. Uh, But yeah, the other body belief was body fat is bad and ugly and must be burned and removed at all costs. Like total Mm -hmm. fat phobia, I think Mm -hmm. in our culture, big time. Like it's, it's really quite um, bad. Um, My curves must be controlled and tamed. Um, Another belief is unless I look like the images in modern media, I'm not beautiful. I'm not acceptable. And probably the deepest, most painful is I'm not enough. Right, the messages that we get if we have any wrinkles, if we look a day over 28, right, as women, um, like if, if we have a baby, we've got to get back into pre baby shape in like 12 weeks. Like, what the heck? You know, like this is all just programming beliefs that aren't real. And I will say, having now being on the other side of it all, we can press pause. Like, I don't pick up those magazines anymore. Um, if a commercial comes on, I just let it like wash off of me, like water off a duck's back. And here are the new beliefs that I subscribe to and really work with my clients in particular. Um, Because again, you can be all different sizes and shapes and you can have all different health challenges or non-challenges, but the underlying beliefs, you talked about your client that was sabotaging her experience with the healthy eating, right? The, the, you can't just change a behavior without actually uncovering, releasing, and repatterning the underlying beliefs. And most of these beliefs were inherited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were inherited. So a lot of these things. So, So the first is that pleasure, movement, fitness, well-being, and radiance is my birthright. It's our birthright to feel really amazing in our skin. So regardless again, of size and pleasure, shape. Pleasure, fitness, movement, pleasure, radiance. well-being and radiance is my birthright. And you can plug in whatever words work for you. Is it happiness? Is it, you know, just even eating healthy? It's it's my birthright. It is our birthright, no matter what the circumstances or how long it's been that way. And I know you've seen clients completely transform their health, and so have I. I mean, women that had chronic health issues or chronic weight issues or chronic inner critic issues, begin to do this deeper work and just see complete transformation, no matter what the expert said, right? No matter what the expert said. So 
Um, the other one that really works with the overworking paradigm is fulfilling work, which is a, an important qualifier, fulfilling work yeah. and regular renewal. So it's the combination of both creates optimal well-being for me. Because even if I overwork in my fulfilling work and yeah. I don't practice regular renewal, I'll get burned out. Absolutely. So it's the combination of both. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a good point to bring that up. And I like that combination of fulfilling work. You know, that, you know, what, what joy do we get from it? I go for a walk uh, here on the Katy Trail in Dallas and um, I met this uh, beautiful woman in, in yoga class, Tammy, and she, um, you know, volunteers at one of these at Big Brothers Bridges, it's called Bridges Recovery, and does the soup kitchen on Wednesdays. And sometimes she's doing, she loves it, thrives at it, but sometimes she's doing it too often. And she recognizes she's got to back out, right? That's part of that renewal. And I know many of our listeners are such givers and helpers and, and that we d tend to go that way. But that, that yin and yang, getting that um, recognizing um, that time to pause as well is part yeah. of the practice. Well, how do you do that, right? So here's what's so important was and that she was doing, but is a new empowering belief that very few of us were taught, which is to honor and trust your body's deeper inner wisdom. Most of us were taught the body something to control and ignore and mold and just like control. What I learned through the mind, body, spirit connection, and particularly in some of the conscious dance practices and mentors I've worked with is my body is totally wired for health. It is constantly seeking my renewal and my health. It's working tirelessly. I just tend to get in its way or ignore it. And what I think you were sharing with, I love this story, is even though it's an empowering, beautiful thing that she's working in the soup kitchen, her body probably started to symptomize in one way or another and tell her it's just too much. Too much of a good thing is still distressful mm -hmm. on the body. Yeah. So really honoring the body's wisdom and listening and then not just listening, but responding mm. is such an important changing some of, of what's going on. And it's daily. That's the thing, right? I, how I felt yesterday was yesterday's day. How am I feeling today? What's going to create the most vitality and, and radiance for me today with what's going on in my life today is so key. Yes, I agree with that. So these are part of the freedom practices, right? You call them your body freedom empowerment beliefs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a few more if you want me to. Sure. Yeah. Give us a couple more. Okay. So the other is that as I love my body, I trust my body to find a healthy size and shape. Mm -hmm. This one is like. That's a good one. So totally good. outside of our normal programming. Mm -hmm. um, but I will tell you, I've had so many clients finally get into to more loving connection with their relationship or leave the abusive relationship or get on their right vocational path and leave a really stressful work that they were doing. And all of a sudden, their body releases 20 pounds overnight because yes. they were in distress mode, right? or they just stop controlling everything so heavily and they focus less on what they can't have and more on what is nourishing. And again, without even trying, the weight just falls away. And they, or other women that the truth was they didn't really need to lose any weight, right? It was just really embracing the beautiful, healthy body that they had. And so it wasn't so much about a weight shift but about how they were treating their body and how they feel in their body. And most importantly, how they were talking to themselves, right? And that constant inner negative chatter, they just paused that. And I, you know, I know, I'm, I know you share this and talk about this in your book, but how we talk to ourselves is so important. Would we let our, uh, somebody speak negatively or abusively to our best friend? Absolutely not. You know, we would say, whoa, whoa, so whoa. I always say, get that nasty bitch off your shoulder. <laughs> can't do it. Be your own, convert that into being your own coach. What would you tell someone you really care about or someone, your best friend's daughter? What would you tell her? You know, and I think this is, um, this is, that's that, that piece that, I mean, we can't say it enough. It has become, we have to embody that practice and discipline and a practice. 
Yeah. My favorite affirmation for that. And you just want to say it, even if you don't fully believe it yet. Cause I know for some of my clients, it, it feels like climbing Mount Everest to think that they could ever love and accept themselves. I know there may be some listeners that may not feel this way or understand, but I will tell you there are lots and lots of people, particularly women who it's so programmed in that it, it feels like a long shot or a moonshot dream mm -hmm. to just feel good about themselves. So here's the affirmation. My body is beautiful and I am fully celebrated and accepted just the way I am. And it starts with ourselves because there will always be somebody around us saying, no, 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 no. In order for me to celebrate you, you've got to look the way the media is telling me you need to look. And it took some time. This did not happen for me overnight where I was able just to pause putting my own personal approval on the altar or how good I feel about myself on the altar of the opinion and approval of anyone else, like literally anybody else. And what, what is my new paradigm? You know, at what point am I going to let myself feel good enough? You know, feel beautiful, feel successful. I have so many clients who are waiting to, to launch their program or, or create that big thing until they lose those last 10 pounds or get back, back out in the game and date or, you know, feel sexy in the bedroom. I just had a class this last week where one of my clients is 40 pounds overweight. And she says, when I look at myself in the mirror, I just feel like a blob. And I said, the only reason why you feel that way is because you're measuring yourself, you're comparing and measuring yourself against a standard. Where did you learn that standard? It didn't, it wasn't as kids, little kids look at people and they don't know anything other than just what they see. They're not taught until there, somebody says, oh, that person's fat, that person's skinny. And then they don't put a meaning on it until they're taught what it means. How do I know this? I've studied actually indigenous cultures. There are African cultures where the women are, are fed and plumped up and their fat is massaged. And that is the sign of optimal beauty and health, right? Is to be plump and we would call it way overweight and fat, but in their culture, like it's a total, it's cultural, right? Is that been, I think it's so fascinating um, just where we get these beliefs. So we want to start with just what if you could be okay just as you are. And the more you feel okay as you are, actually that will lead to healthier habits and the healthier habits that are created leads to a healthier result, healthier weight, healthier life, all the things that we're seeking. They, it all comes together, right? It all comes together when we do it this way. And, you know, and it, it, as we practice it, those around us will practice it, you know, and I think that's really important, especially as a mom of four daughters and, you know, just recognizing, uh, you know, what, what I'm doing, how, you know, I'm looking in the mirror, what I'm saying is affecting her, you know, all of them as well, especially the weest one, the 13 year old who's now living with me becoming a teenager and her body just starting to shift and all of all of the things that she's noticing. And I think that's really always important. And that's something I noticed energetically through my own transform transformation and journey is that as as I focused on my health and those priorities and that, that um, going easier on myself, taking a little ease and taking some of the pressure off, right? That it took the pressure off of those around me and it created more ease in those around me. So Jennifer, I want to thank you so much for sharing your story today. And I would just uh, ask you if I know you have so much, so much wisdom and we have hundreds of thousands of people listening to this program from you know, all over at, at, at many ages, what is one last closing thought that you would like to um, share with them? Mm, you know, I think the most important thing that we uh, teach and believe at the Brave Thinking Institute, and that is that the power breathing you is more powerful than any circumstance, any situation, or any condition. So no matter what the 
longing is, what the discontent is, what the thing is that you are looking for, wanting to shift, that this power of breathing you is guiding you to answers and resources. And that answer and resource may be, you know, Dr. Anna, obviously you're listening to this podcast, right? Or this, or, you know, experiencing this wisdom one way or another. And it could be something that she's providing a program or an audio or a, a product or a book, you know, it could be something that I might be offering and to just follow that inner guidance, to follow that intuition, to follow the body's wisdom. My own body's wisdom has provided information and resources that no one outside of me could have provided. And it was really my opportunity to discover her, to get to know her and to create this beautiful, loving relationship with my own body and her wisdom. And no one else can do that for us, uh, but our own selves. So just to, you know, love ourselves as much as we possibly can. Oh, I, I, I love that. And it's so true. It's our body's inner wisdom just to tune into that. And Jennifer, your websites are bravethinkinginstitute.com. So bravethinkinginstitute.com and vibranthealthyliving.com. And we'll put some links in because you have a, you have a couple um, uh, links for us. You have a meditation. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that I hear so much that probably the number one thing that people want isn't so much like the, the creating the ideal weight, but they want to feel confident, right? They want to feel confident in their skin. So I've created a confidence kit. And that confidence is sexy. Confidence is so sexy. So the confidence kit is designed to help you feel even more confident in your body and more radiant, vibrant, and alive in your life. And there's a, an ebook book that are three of my tested and proven five minute practices to help you increase your confidence, energy, and radiance. So we're so busy. These are little practices that are proven less than five minutes. And then in addition to the ebook, um, which has some incredible resources, it's a love your body guided meditation. Um, and what I have found, and I'm sure you practice this as well, Dr. Anna, is that when you release that um, fight or flight, you know, response and you move into the parasympathetic response and you're in that calm, confident place, we make better choices, right? We make better choices of what we put in our mouths and how we speak to ourselves and everything about our lives. So the guided meditation is a big hit um, as well as the ebook. So my free gift to all of your listeners. Excellent. I know I'm going to share those with my daughters too. So that's, um, that's really powerful. Thank you so much for that. And thank you so much for spending time with us today. And, and here in the Girlfriend Doctor Show, I want to thank all of our listeners and viewers. I I'm um, just blessed to have you here. You know, what I am about helping you nourish your body and your spirit, right? And embrace whole health to shine with vibrant beauty and awaken to your limitless possibilities. That's what I want for each and every one of you. And let me tell you, this is a beautiful time. And here in the Girlfriend Doctor Show, really taking on your questions. So please type in your questions. We get to them and answer them as, as often and as frequently as I can through the show on my uh, live uh, programming with the Instagram at the Girlfriend Doctor or Facebook at the Girlfriend Doctor. And on my website, you can type in your question. Remember, there's no such thing as too much information. So go to dranna.com forward slash show. Also, wherever you're listening to this podcast, please rate, uh, give us your rating, give me your reviews. They make my day and I'm so grateful for your appreciation. This is a labor of love and I love hearing from you as a result. Be sure to share this episode as well and tell your friends. Let's bring, continue to grow this community of wise women and men worldwide as we journey in this life and this experience at this time together. All right. Thank you all. See you next time. Mm -hmm.